when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Jesus said, But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord God. God. The big celebration of Easter Sunday is over, and what a glorious celebration it was. The flowers, the music, the liturgy, the fellowship, the hallelujah chorus. It was all so powerful and moving. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. Now, for many people, Easter is finished, but not for us. For us, it has just begun. The church observes not just the day of Easter, which we refer to as the Sunday of the Resurrection, but also the season of Easter, which is often referred to as the Great 50 Days. When I think of the season of Easter, I remember something that the Reverend Canon Susan Russell once wrote in her blog, it was several years ago, and she said this, it just caught my attention. See if it catches yours too. She said, I didn't go through 40 days of Lent to spend just one day in Easter. Lent is 40 days long. Easter is 50 days long. And we want you to know that you're invited to join us as we celebrate all of it, as we rejoice and give thanks to God throughout the whole 50 days. As today's gospel lesson begins, the disciples have gone into hiding. They've locked the doors because they're afraid. Well, of course they're afraid. Look what happened to Jesus. They must have been afraid that they might be arrested too after all. They were his disciples. Who knows? They might come for them. They might even want to crucify them. It was a scary thought. What happened to Jesus was terrible. It's an awful story, which we remember together in some detail during Holy Week. Jesus was crucified, died, buried, it's an ugly and awful story if it ends there. 
if it ends with the crucifixion, it's terrible. Jesus died, buried. But the story doesn't end there. On the third day, he rose again. Jesus faced death and rose to tell the story. He overcame death, and he was not in the tomb when they came to tend his body on the first Easter morning. He is risen. Now, what about his disciples? We join them during the evening of that first Easter Sunday, and they are frightened, they're worried, they're probably more than a little confused. Some of them are ashamed for having abandoned him. Peter's feeling a little remorseful for all the times that he denied them. There's just emotion full in this room. So many nervous, anxious, agitated people huddled together in fear. And suddenly, the resurrected Jesus stands among them. I love the sign for that. When you stand before somebody, it looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're going, which one? Okay, so he showed up. She said that she, that, that she did that one first. He showed up, and then they stand before him. There you go. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to stand before Jesus, to have Jesus in the midst of your fear stand before you. Wow. Couldn't we love to have that when we're in fear? And in a lot of ways, we can and we do. So Jesus enters that room because no locked door is going to stop him. He stands before them, all resurrection, resurrected and glorified. And he recognizes their fear. And he says, peace be with you. Now these words, peace be with you, he had used recently with them. If you might remember at the Last Supper, he said, peace be with you, my peace I leave you. The peace that I give is not as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. So when he stands there and he says, peace be with you, all of that comes forward in their ears, echoes in their minds. Peace be with you is connected with this idea do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. And after showing them his wounds, he says it again. And he adds some important things. He says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Wow. Jesus' earthly life and work is finished. But now, now, blessed with the Holy Spirit, these disciples are called to pick up where he left off and continue his mission and ministry. And then, generation after generation after generation, that responsibility was handed down. And today, we are the ones sent to love, to forgive, and to sacrifice on behalf of the world that Jesus loves so much. The world was a fearful place when Jesus walked this earth. And it's a fearful place today, too. Jesus knew this fear perhaps better than anyone the peace that Jesus offers is not of this world. It's a peace that surpasses all understanding. It makes no sense in the world. But that's okay, because not everything is of the world. It's the peace that comes from knowing that no matter how bad it gets in the world, it's not the end of the story. Easter is the story of transformation of the opportunity for new life. Hope was gone, but now it's back. Death seemed to win, but Jesus overcame death once for all. 
What wonderful gifts Jesus gives the disciples in that locked room. He gives them peace so that their hearts don't need to be troubled, so that their minds don't need to be afraid. And he gives them the Holy Spirit to be with them, not occasionally, not now and then, constantly as their companion. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. You can take that spirit and have it with you, and it will provide you insight, interpretation, inspiration, strength. Because what you're being called to do is not easy to do. So let's equip you well. So here comes that spirit to be with you. And these gifts that he gave to them are now handed down to us. As those who commit ourselves to serve as disciples, we pick up where this story leaves off. We gather every Sunday to learn, to grow, to get nourished, to support one another. We wish one another God's peace. And when we do, we're reminding each other of the wonderful truth that God's story isn't the world's story. God's ways aren't the world's ways. There are plenty of good reasons why the disciples should have been afraid. Their fears were not unfounded. Many of them would eventually be arrested and killed. But in this lesson, Jesus stands among them transformed and offers them the peace that comes from knowing that even death cannot separate us from the love of God. Good will win in the end. God had more in store for them and God has more in store for us. Whatever we're afraid of, in spite of whatever it is that causes us to occasionally hide and lock ourselves in, no matter how hopeless things may seem, we need to remember these words. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Thomas was not with them when Jesus appeared to them that night. I don't know where he was, it doesn't tell us, but he was really disappointed that he wasn't there. The other disciples were so excited and they told him the story and he was just, I don't know, people, I just need to see it for myself. I don't know how much he didn't believe exactly, but it just, it couldn't, he couldn't fit all the pieces together without seeing Jesus himself. He wanted to, to see his wounds. He wanted to put his hand in Jesus' side. He wanted to have a certainty that sometimes you just don't get. Sometimes you just don't feel, especially when you're grieving. But he longed for it. He hoped for it. He prayed for it. I think we all have trouble believing sometimes. The mysteries of faith don't make logical sense. They aren't rational. The world likes things to be rational. But faith isn't rational. Faith is beyond the rational. It extends beyond the worldly and reaches into the spiritual, which is a whole different realm. Have you believed because you have seen me, Jesus asked them? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. You see, he comes again, and he shows time. See my wounds? He says, peace be with you. We know that means do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Here I am. See my side. Listen, you had to see me to put it together. And God bless you. I love you. Go out and do what I've given you to do. But others are going to come who are not going to get to see. And bless them too. May this story be a blessing for the ages, not just for these people, but for all the people, because Jesus loves everybody. It's a, it's a great and tremendous love story. So this gospel lesson speaks to us of doubt and fear, and we all have doubts, and we certainly have plenty of things to be afraid of, and that's okay, because God loves us. Even when we're afraid, the Holy Spirit is with us even when we have doubts, even when we're unsure. God who creates life 
has given us this day, these bodies, the talents that we have, the abilities we have, the connections and the resources that we have, all of it. In addition to that, he gives us peace and the Holy Spirit to hang on to. And even more, because God just keeps giving and just keeps forgiving, God also gives us the community of St. Paul's. He gives us one another to be on this holy journey together with. We are the church, and we need to be willing, even when we're afraid, even when we're not sure, even when we have doubts, we need to be willing to go walk out into that world and shine as the light of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is not the end of our story. This is just the beginning. And so the celebration continues. Happy Easter. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.